All right. So, my thoughts and theories on the uh, the open world update, which everyone's waiting for, because every, everyone's been asking that uh, for that from day one. You know what I mean? So, how I personally think it's going to come about, which this this is just how I'd like it to see it come. Um, you know, like you've got the map already. This is why I got the map then. You've obviously got this map, yeah? This is the Dead Frontier map. Have a new area, or even on edge somewhere, like at the top, on the side, bottom, whatever. But anyway, how I'd like to see it is a new area, yeah, called the Inner City, right? That's it, the Inner City. Because that's what it was called in Dead Frontier 1. Well, Dead Frontier 2D and 3D. Yeah, the Inner City. So you go to the Inner City, it's level... 30 to 50 or whatever he's going up to yeah and it's the inner city outpost is a bridge right so you'll be on you'll be on the bridge you know you'll have all your traders and stuff on the bridge yeah and then you'll go out of the bridge like you know like say you're going out of a door but instead you go to the end of the bridge and that would take you into the inner city and then that's where the open world would be that's how i'd like to see it because then people have still got these areas where it's not too overwhelming and stuff like that. And then um, also, the car is still a viable option in the game. Obviously, you just, right, I want to go from Dalbo to the inner city. I want to go from the inner city to Dalbo or whatever. But when you're in the inner city, you can't use your car because you've got to run everywhere. I mean, it's just on how big is going to do it. But then, even then, you could still put... You know, as is expanding the inner city, you could still put outposts in the inner city. So it'd be like a completely different map. Because you've got to leave this area, go to the, the bridge, which would be the inner city bridge or whatever. And then that would take you into the city. But one thing I would like to see, like I said not long ago, on um, the release of it, is barricading. You know, so you can... Well, obviously this. Like, he's already got it in. It's already in the game. All he has to do is make it so you can run up to a window and hold E. And then boom, it goes up. You know, run up to a door. Hold E to o well, E to open door or like F. Maybe F. Have it as F, yeah? Hold F to barricade door. Obviously you have to kill all the zombies or whatever. Then you can barricade it all up. And make your own outpost. That's that's how it were in DF1. That's what I'd like to see in DF2. Obviously there's no point of scrapping this entire area or redoing the whole thing. Because to give it the base game's fine. Just, like, overhaul the areas a little bit. Make it so they're not just, like, a tiny little road. Like, maybe barricades at the end of the, each road. Because then it looks like the area's been boarded off. You know what I mean? But then, little bridge in a city. Boom. That is my... That's how I'd like to see it. But obviously, I want to see everything running. Because, like, when you see me doing the Blood Mother on this, on this player, a level 10, level 25 area, it was kind of difficult. But I could still do it. If I went on my level 25 or level 30 character, it's way too easy. Like, way too easy. Every zombie should be running. Like, the second you shoot your gun, everything just turns at you and it's like, I'm going to eat that guy. He is my dinner today. You know what I mean? And everything just charges at you. That's how I'd like to see it. That's my thoughts and theories on the inner city. Hopefully, it'll come out something along them lines. That's what I'd like to see. So, what do you guys in the chat now, what do you guys want to see? From the inner city updates, what are what is the things that you'd like to see? All right, going along with the idea of being the inner city, maybe have the buildings themselves randomly generate along with the contents. See, I've never been a fan of that. You know, the randomly con random generated buildings. I've never been a fan of that. Because you can get some buildings that are just way, way, way too big. Like, just over-proportionate too big. Obviously, some people are like that still. I've never personally been a fan of it. Obviously, if I go into a building, I like to press M, have a map, be able to see where I go. But obviously, because, how it, because of how it is right now, you have to generate the, your map every single day, which can get kind of annoying. And also, with that, you're never going to have one barricade buildings. Well, you'll probably have them, but you'll have to find them every day. Which on Dead Frontier 1, if you wanted a one barricade building, you'd just have a look on the map, on the Dead Frontier map. Um, and then you'd just look, alright, so there's a one barricade building there. You'd run down to that spot, 
and you've got yourself a one barricade building. So you're not going to carry too many building supplies. Because obviously if you're going out into inner city, you don't want to be carrying your full invent of um, hammers, nails and stuff like that. It would be random, but in a controlled sense, like say the police station isn't the same exact place every day, you would have to explore the inner city to find it every day. That's not the worst idea. Yeah. I don't mind that. Yeah, that, that'd be all right. That'd be hard to do, though. But yeah, I know what you mean. I just don't like the insides of building being generated. Like, the outside of the map being generated, that'd be cool. But that would be very hard to implement. Because obviously you've got to fill the space up all the time. And if it's not done right, you know, you could have a full road with just one house on it. And four parks. You know what I mean? So it'd have to be done... It has to be coded very well, with like something like that. And obviously, uh, Neil is just one one guy. So that that'd be it'd be a good thing to do, but it'd be a hard thing to do for one person, one coder anyway. Love the idea of the whole city running at you if you fire a gun. Yeah, because it's just the game. Like I said, the game's just too. It's making it harder. Don't get me wrong. The game is getting harder. I do like that. But I want it to be hard, you know what I mean? Not so many crows, dogs instead. Yeah, I, I hate the crows as well. Please don't put crows everywhere, for the love of God. But, um, yeah, dogs would be a cool idea. Fucking wallet in my back pocket. I think dogs will come eventually. It's just he's got to make them first, though, ain't he? I don't know why I'm still on that. And not too many worms. No one likes the worms. Crate make, crows make no one play on the street for more than two minutes unless there is a street boss. Yeah, because no one likes them. Because they're annoying. It's already having odd one or two every now and then, but when you've got like ten in one area, it's just it's pure frustration. This is what I was trying to tell him with the worms. To tone the, when I said to him, obviously when we'll first start playing the game, tone the worms down. Although they are a cool idea, they're a good idea, but they are very, very frustrating. When you get too many on your screen, it's just annoying. And that's what you want to avoid in games. You don't want to annoy your playbase. You never want to annoy your playbase. I wouldn't mind the waves as much if they would also have some kind of animation or sound when they burst from someone. Yeah, that'd be cool. If it had a sound or something, yeah. I do like that idea. I think they could combine open world with letters. With letters? You'll find a letter which will lead you somewhere to find item or treasure. Well, I've always thought that about the keys, to be fair. You know, um, when you find a key that takes you into a room that hasn't got a boss in, obviously you have to put some, uh, some effort into finding them and then getting into them. So, it'd be alright if you could get some good loot from them. Like maybe a supply box or something like that, which will give you a bit of... Better ammunition, bit of food, bit of water, a couple of medical supplies. I've always thought that'd be a good idea. Supply boxes in locked rooms. But the problem is with that is pick locking. So, lock, yeah, pick locking. So maybe, like, all right, so the Sons of Ink building that I was on about saying, so you know, you have to get the codes. Like, so for the people that don't know, the thing that I was on about there was I told Neil about turning it into a raid. Yeah? So you'd have five you do have five floors. The boss room would have a code on it. You'd have to get the four digits to get into that boss room. And then the stairs would be right, so you'd have to go for the first floor to find a, a number written on a wall in blood. Second floor, second number, third floor, you know, so on so on. You get the four numbers from the four floors, go to the fifth floor, find the boss room, type the code to get into the boss room, kill the boss, it'll drop a key. Or another code, fuck knows, and then that'll open the door behind the boss. And then that'll go to the next five floors. So you could even implement that. Have coded rooms everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but on, you know, in a couple of rooms, like in a hospital or in a police station. Like an armory or something like that. You have to go through the police station, you find a few numbers written on the walls, or notes on desks. As someone was saying notes a minute ago. Go to the armory, that'll open the armory up. You find, you know, a supply box, some ammunition around stuff like that like little ammo boxes that you can loot i think that'd be a cool idea 
like the law notes seem to a location in the inner city with some good loot or supplies. Yeah, so kind of same idea, but you're on about like on the entirety of the map. I'm on about like inside small buildings. So yeah, it's a good idea. Obviously, it gives you more to do in the game. You know, you go around, you're looking for these notes and stuff like that, and then that'll take you on to the next part. I've always felt like noise on weapons is way on the play in what it's supposed to be what? In what it's supposed to be a struggle for survival against an undead horde. This new enemy has in mind of chase you between rooms being attracted by high amounts of noise rather than appearing a pure random. Would add more dynamic gameplay. What if it were attracted to noise? That that had come down to an invisible uh, aggro meter, basically. So you know you spend enough time out there, you make enough noise. Eventually, your invisible bar had maxed out, and then when that maxed out, the thing had spawned in. Yeah, that's a good idea. You bang around too much, he shows up. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. That'd be a good way to do it, actually. You know, say. Just ra just randomly like a hundred rounds from a shotgun, two hundred round, three hundred rounds from an SMG, hundred and fifty rounds from a rifle, something like that. You know, having have an invisible bar. You can't actually see the bar, but whenever it fills up, and obviously that uh, new zombie that he's put into the game would come out and start chasing you. Grr. Scary. When I first started, I thought the extra zombies randomly wandering into my room was due to me shooting off guns, but they come in regardless of the noise you make, which I felt was disappointing. Yeah, a little bit. I kind of agree with you on that, but... I think they, they, should, they should still come in, like, every now and then, because obviously they're wandering about, aren't they? But yeah, the more noise you're making, they should, like... Every like couple of shots, a zombie should enter the room. Like every couple of bullets, because then that that actually make it harder. Is in like you know if you've not got enough damage, and you're shooting your pistol ten times to kill a zombie, zombies are just going to keep coming and coming and coming and coming. Hope that I will not invite you when you're doing some boss on. Invade you, <laughs> mate. Could you imagine that? That would be pretty cool actually. That'd make a boss fight hard, man. Like, I don't feel. I feel like look, the, the bosses shouldn't be in the small buildings as well. This is what I mean. I don't know how the inner city is going to work. Is he going to have bosses in buildings or on the street? That's the That's the thing that is not really told anyone. Which I'm kind of curious. Cause Dead Frontier One, you never found a boss in a building. Dead Frontier Two, obviously until they updated it, you never found him on the street. Now you find him on the street and in the buildings. So I'm super curious how that, that's going to happen. I'd say take the bosses out of small buildings and only have them in the big ones. Like the police stations, the hospitals, uh, Sons and Ink buildings, stuff like that. Like the big towers. Hopefully bunkers will come back to the game. That was, they was like the best places to go in Dead Frontier. It always goes to the bunkers. Um, helicopter crash site, that was a good place to go. Looting that uh, shot down helicopter. Spots like that. That's what you want. You do want unique positions. You know, so you feel like, oh, I want to go to... I feel like I'm going to get lucky at the hospital... Um, the helicopter crash today. Or, you know, something like that. Or I think, oh, I'll go to a bunker and try and look there. Some unique positions where people go. I hope there will be some good bosses on the streets. The street bosses, as they are now, bring the lobby you are playing in together. Yeah, the problem is like a lot of them are really slow though. So unless you get like a Titan or a Tendril, they're really, really easy. So I don't know how he's gonna play that. Cause all, all the boss, yeah, apart from a Titan and a Tendril, all the other bosses are super easy on the street. And to be fair, I'm kind of hoping that the bo the bosses that we've got now will just become to special infected. It'll it'll get us some proper bosses for um. For the open world update. Choir should call more 
running zombies. Yeah, that's a good idea. When he screams, it'll like spawn a couple of zombies in. That'd be a really good idea. Um, mother. I don't know what you could do with her, really. Just had her a massive puke or something. I've always said that, though. She's a puke. I think everyone's always said that. Uh, fingers. I don't know what you do with fingers. Probably speed him up a little bit. I don't know. Like I said, I hope they're just going to turn into specially infected. And we'll get some crazy, crazy bosses. Mother could spawn those weird little zombies you pointed out. Would be terrifying. Weird little zombies? Oh, do you mean on the art when we were looking at that? Yeah, that could be a good idea. Yeah, mothers should do that as well. Mothers should, mothers should spawn like little zombies in. Little baby zombies, man. That'd be cool. Like the worm or something. You know when she spawns a worm in? Like give the worm like a 30 second to a minute timer or something. And then if you've not killed it, it like blows up and fucking turns into a little zombie like a, a little child zombie or something man that that'd be sick that'd actually be dope mate or like got like 10 kids chasing you about <laughs> just boosh with ba baseball bat over back at head that'd be dope man do that admin do that that'd be cool <laughs> i'd like to see that great alan's just been recording for 17 minutes all right i'll call it there anyway i'll go and do a go and do this other box When you look on fingers too long, she could stun you for one second. That could give her time to damage you. I think fingers would be more speed. Would be fine if three inches. Yeah, like it, it's just, it, it, the problem is fingers is just a weird boss. Like in general, in my opinion, it's just a weird boss. But yeah, right. Let's get back to the stream. Um, it was still some in that.